Hello, and welcome to the newest, latest, next episode of Lost in Criterion. That, Adam, was for your benefit. Uh, we are your Thank hosts, you. John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and... I am the Adam Less. And... Oh. Uh, ask. What? A- ask are away. What are we oh, got- what's, what's our film for we? today? What are we watching this week? <laughs> okay. I was just going to introduce it, but then you started to ask what it was. I like to ask what it, it, what it I, is. No, I... I like you asking. In in the list of things that we will have decided as we do this are things we should continue to do and then but don't. But that's the other that's issue because we're doing them so far ahead of time. By the time we get feedback. Yes. 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 Uh, any feedback you send today, you're not going to hear until yeah, you've got 2014. Yeah, you've got episodes before you're going <laughs> yes. to see any major change yeah. in the way things are done. So, uh, so thanks for the yeah. feedback. Still Thank send you. it. And this is a long project, so if you're going to... Yeah, if you want to stick it out or come back when we work that Yeah, right? You can just skip Uh, 50 episodes, I guess. Yeah, that'll be awesome. This week we're talking about uh, Andre Tarkovsky's uh, 1966 loose, very loose biographical epic of uh, medieval Russian icon, religious icon painter Andre Rublev, called Andre Rublev, uh, originally called the Passion of Andre, actually. Uh, and I thought that was just a one of the translations that was. Yeah, no, I think I think that was supposed to be his original I'm title. Um, I'm not sure on that, but I I think it works because then it's. There's some ambiguity as to whether the passion of Andre is Andre Rublev or Andre Tarkovsky. Um, Ingrid Bergman mm. once called uh, Tarkovsky uh, the greatest director uh, because he invented a huh. new language, uh, true to the nature of film, uh, that captures life as a reflection, life as a dream. End quote. Um, I'm not sure I understood what you just said. I'm not sure I agree with Ingrid Bergman in what I understand to have just said. But, uh, but I have that up. Uh, Tarkovsky is, you know, one of the greater, probably, we'll say the greatest director to come out of Soviet Russia, certainly. Um, oh, but what about, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> unless you can think offhand of another director came out of any, anyone. Um, <laughs> maybe, but it may be pre-Soviet Russia. Yeah. So, so um. Yeah, it's 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 he's he's good at what he does. He he did the original Solaris. He did a few other, a few other movies, um, which I believe are also on the Criterion Collection. He's a name that'll pop up quite a bit more for us. You know, not quite as much as some others, but but more than more than quite a few. Um, so yeah, uh, this movie, like I said, a loose biographical epic. Uh, it is the original cut of this movie uh, is. Over three hours long, and that's the that's the cut we get to watch. Um, oh, and is it over three hours long? Yeah, it is yeah. so completely over three hours long. Yeah, the Criterion listing that okay, I'm looking yeah, at now okay. says that it's 205 minutes. Battleship Patinkin. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. That, 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 there are other famous Soviet Yeah, there are that, other Soviet, and so, famous Soviet directors. Soviet directors. No, that's not. It's like, that's the one I've seen that I actually liked. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is, this is very weird. Um, but anyway, uh, what was I saying? Uh, the, Sorry. the criterion, the criterion listing says that this is the two hour or the 205 minute cut, which would be three hours and 25 minutes. Um, no, it actually says it's the 185 minute cut, five minute, which would be like, which would be three hours, three hours watched. and five minutes. But I swear what I watched as the Andre Rublev. You know, Criterion oh, DVD. We both watched. Well, we both watched because you watched it on Hulu, uh, which is which is. And the I Criterion saw selection. the time. It was like three yeah. hours and thirty five minutes. It's definitely three hours and thirty five minutes. So it's very weird that, that they list this as one hundred and eighty five, um, because it is it is much longer than that. Um, <laughs> maybe we watched the wrong one. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they're like, ooh, you should have watched. <laughs> maybe that later one. they went back and apparently the the cut that. Uh, um, the cut that the Criterion ended up using for this uh, was bought by uh, Martin Scorsese uh, on a trip to Russia 
that he brought it back and they used it. This movie was immediately started to be cut and immediately started to be suppressed. Not necessarily politically. Um, there is an extent of that because the Soviets didn't like religion, period. Um, so, so an ideal, an idealizing of a, uh, of a, you know, Christian icon painter, not necessarily meshing well with, with. Yeah, but Soviet I things. kind of found that because I read the same thing and yeah. I kind of had a little bit of trouble dealing with that because the way. Now, mind you, yeah. I did not understand this movie. Yeah. I found it dense to the point of incomprehensibility. Um, but I didn't find that, like... You where didn't, am I going You didn't this? find it challenging? I didn't, Did that... No, I didn't find that, like, he was portrayed in a way that would make... I don't know. Maybe I'm just not Soviet yeah. Russian. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think... The more I read about it, because you know it's it's big that this was suppressed. It's not like it's a movie about Jesus. Yeah, I don't. What I'm I don't think it was suppressed because of anything. I think it was political. suppressed because it was three hours and thirty five freaking minutes long, and they're well, like, "Are I you freaking kidding us?" I think it's. I think it's just like you know, it's it's like the Hays Code. It's just it's being suppressed because there's a lot of nudity and violence in this movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's yeah, and that's also it, antithetical yeah. to the entire idea. Yeah, um, yeah. For it's, Soviet it's, Russia, it's censorship and... not on an ideological stance, but on a uh, on a graphical stance. I think. Yeah, and like especially at this time period in Soviet history, I would think yeah, you're trying to get people yeah. not thinking about war. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah. So. Anyway, this was suppressed, and it, it was released, you know, a few different versions with a few different cuts, getting it down. You know, I think ultimately there were cuts all the way down to under, like, an hour and a half, really. No, I would have liked to see that. For around, a, around 100 minutes, I think, was the shortest cut. Um, so the one we watched, though, was definitely, definitely, like, 200 the film you've ever 215. Seen in your entire life? The original cut was 205. And I really feel like what we watched was like at least three hundred, three hours and thirty five minutes, do the, not twenty five yeah. minutes. But uh, but that would no, be no. I know that ours was yeah two yeah. two hundred and five would be three hours and twenty five minutes. And and, and it, I feel like my DVD player was telling me it was longer than that. Um, no, I, yeah, I know that my because yeah. who gave me that number at the beginning and I about choked. Yeah, I'm sure that you were keeping an eye on that as it counted oh, down to man. I watched that clock like it was one out of style. <laughs> I did. I did not. I liked this movie very obviously more than you did. Uh, it was it was no, long. No, that's the weird thing. Yeah. So I did not. There were parts of the film I liked quite a bit. I liked the bell making scene. Yeah. That that whole event that was really nice and yeah. good to me. Some of the others, I'm like, why are we even showing this? Like, what's going on? Like, what? And maybe it's because I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I did not dislike the film. I just found it too much. The movie's, the movie's a series of vignettes about, about his life, about Rublev's life. And they're not, there's not necessarily an overarching narrative there besides... And I think that's part of the problem. You know, as as far as plot from one point to the other, there is the there is the you know he he gets disillusioned and then he murders the guy to save that girl, um, and then she leaves <laughs> she leaves with him and he <laughs> leaves with another totter, tater totter. <laughs> no, it's not tater tartar. Or tar, tartar. No, it's not tartar. There's no first R. Um, tatar. Tatar. Um, no, I, th- I think it is. Tata. I like tater. That was good. Tater. <laughs> it's, it's, that's a very, that's a very terrible pronunciation, but we'll go with it. The tater. Sure, why not? No, she leaves with someone else, and he takes a vow of silence because he feels like he failed somehow. And then at the end, you know, with the bell making scene, he's redeemed, and it's a very happy ending, and he, he goes back to painting. So you know, there's that narrative. Um, yeah, part. but it, that's the weird thing is like, yeah, I understand the overarching. Yeah, but it's, it's, they're all just because it's I read very the while I was watching it. It's very but, episodic uh, within it, though. But that's part of the problem is I, it feels very to me very disconnected between the episodes. Yeah, despite showing the same guy, yes, it felt so. 
it's almost the opposite of Oliver Twist that we watched like yeah. three times, like, two times ago. It's, an incredibly it's like slow these pacing. things are happening, and then like then it changes scenes, and there's no yeah. It's almost like the character resets and starts all over again for the new scene because it doesn't matter what happened before. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and that bothers me. It, like the like I said, the only scene I really legitimately liked was the whole bell making section. I thought yeah. that was that could have been the movie. Yeah, to but me. but he that's also just made that. <laughs> that's also the only section that deals with repercussions of decisions made earlier. Really. Yes. It's the only time where something that happened in the last vignette actually affects what's happening now. And that's part of the issue is yeah, yeah it's the only one where we see well, the only one where we see a plot. Yeah. Where any narrative action occurs. And, and you're really you're really true. You know, there's a, there's this certain amount of I guess temptation through through some of the others and you know, and and as a passion play I guess it has to have that. Well, it certainly has to have that. But um but it's not. It doesn't. It feels inconsequential, really. Right, and totally and good. you you call it a passion play, and I understand totally why you say that. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like it because it's so mild all the time. His 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 build up, and then his fall, and then his like redemption are all so mild. And that's the only, and again, I get into the fact that I like the bell scene partially because that's the first time in my mind where we really see something that real, like that's the first part in my mind of that entire sort of passion play, where like we have authentic emotion and like yeah, it's interesting human it, action and it's interesting that some of the best scenes are the ones that Rublev is not involved with then. Um, yeah. So the the bell primarily focuses on the young bell maker who has you know lied he's faking basically. It. Yeah. He's faking it till he makes it, um, <laughs> claiming that his father gave him some secret to bell making that doesn't even exist. Uh, so, and then, and which then, by the way, you know what that inspired me to do? Spend what? about forty five minutes reading about bell foundry. <laughs> Excellent. Which Excellent. was very fascinating. I, I don't think he could have done that. I, he, he, that yeah. apparently it is apparently a very complicated thing to do. Yeah. And that and if you don't know what you're doing, apparently your chances of getting it yeah. right are basically zero. Yes. Uh, another very interesting scene to me was when uh, Kirill, uh, the other monk, the one who ends up mm. jealous of Rublev and disappears for three quarters of the movie and then comes back <laughs> at the end. Um, yeah. I first meets the Greek painter Theophanes um, and they have that conversation that's a that's a great little bit of characterization and narrative um, as as the two of them kind of discuss you only <laughs> Curl of only it says you only like me because I can talk to you about books <laughs> and, uh, and they have this conversation while someone's being tortured right outside. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I remember that. And yeah. I, yeah, like, I kind of don't understand the the Greek character, that guy. I don't well, understand yeah. his function. I, it's very, Historically, I found myself very confused by this movie. I'm not going to lie. Like, it was, parts of it I liked. And then yeah. a lot of it I was like, what? With Within the movie, he's the guy who sets Rublev on his journey. Uh, right. Historically, okay. he's the guy who he's you know he's one of the main people who brought the Byzantine icon painting to Russia, and Russian icon well, painting is very much based in Byzantine. Got... Yeah, okay. um, you know, obviously very modified too. There's 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 a difference between Russian and straight Byzantine Greek Orthodox icon painting. Uh, and that that's could... where I got a bit confused because it almost seemed to me like he couldn't possibly be a real person. <laughs> he really is a real person. Because and the reason is because it seems so weird to yeah. see some old man with it almost felt to me throughout the film like he's not a real person. Like he's some just an amalgamation of people, or uh, or creative yeah, or, cloth or even or... like kind of more like a Greek chorus kind of thing. Maybe, like he's maybe. there to move things along, but doesn't represent a real person. 
Uh, I, I don't think, know. Was, I think he was meant to. It's it's hard to argue though in this movie because it's so very loosely based in reality. That, right, and know. that's what, and and the fact that they tell us like you know we yeah. find out that he's a Greek icon. It it almost felt like something you. It almost felt like vaguely Harvey esque <laughs> to <laughs> me. And like no well, one's... certainly, certainly that later scene where he's hallucinating the ghost of the Greek, and they have an extended conversation is very Harvey esque, and that's where it, that only made it more confusing for me. Yeah, because I was like, "What is a Greek doing wandering yeah. around Russia?" Well, with, this is a very which is super movie. Greek name. Even the very beginning, the, the entire first sequence of this movie has nothing to do. No, oh, I know with the rest of the movie. It's the and guy that. that put me off so bad. Yeah, a bunch of guys make a hot air balloon as yeah. the peasants try to stop them and then he flies around one of them gets in the harness and flies around and there's a lot of beautiful shots of the countryside, a lot of panoramic scenes of beautiful <laughs> did a beautiful. horse going in forward motion and in reverse as far as I can tell. Yes. And then and then uh, the horse rolls over and uh, this thing this thing the balloon crashes and the guy's probably dead. And that's <laughs> That's the extent. We never come back to him. We never know what was going on. It's yeah. And I read some what. Yeah, okay. I don't know what. Okay. And every so often, I get a little dismissive of art. Okay. Yes. I want you to okay. accept that. Okay. <laughs> yes. I, in general, like art, but then I get a little dismissive. And so apparently, well, I guess I get more dismissive of art criticism. And I was reading the Wikipedia. I think it was talking about that. That represents like an escape from. It basically. The justification for that scene that I read made no sense, and I, I, in fact, I can probably find it. It's, I, it's yeah. baffling to me. I, the yeah. entire that scene, I, see. I was like, it's... who? I even kept my asking myself, like, so which one of you is Andre? <laughs> None of them. Oh, none of them were Andre. None of you are Andre. <laughs> yes. Okay. And even even in the scenes we meet Andre, we don't know he's Andre until yeah. much later. Oh, I know that made it so hard, Adam. <laughs> like, who is Andre? Yeah, that first section with the with the jester thing and the oh. three of them traveling to Moscow or whatever is very... Who are these people? Which one of you should I be paying attention to? Why do any of you exist? Um, and they're all important, it turns out, in their own very weird ways, despite the fact that no one really features prominently in this movie at all. all. Adam, um, I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna read, I'm gonna read the Wikipedia. Okay. Yefim. So that's the guy flying. Yes. Nope. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yefim is the first of several creative characters representing the daring escapist, whose hopes are easily crushed. After the escape, a horse is seen lolling by, lolling? Man, who wrote this Wikipedia article? <laughs> by a pawn... A symbol of life, one of many horses in the movie. Yeah. So um, it's a combination of escapism and horses. Okay. 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 It's interesting that they say a horse as a symbol of life because horses obviously very prominently feature as some sort of motif in this movie, and I had no idea what what at all that might Me be going to. Me too, until I just read that. <clears throat> we end that scene with a horse like rolling over. We have the very ending... Uh, it is a same sort of aerial panor- panorama of a bunch of horses running around. Um, and there's horses throughout. They kill a horse on screen, in fact, roll him down a p- flight of stairs during that extended... Uh, that alone is reason enough to censor a movie. <laughs> yes, yes. The For act real. of killing of a horse on a screen. A real killing of a horse, not a yes. fake killing of a horse. Yeah. They roll them downstairs and then stab it in the chest. That is a horse they actually bought from a slaughterhouse who was scheduled to be killed. Um, they bought him just, and then after they were done with it, returned the carcass to the slaughterhouse. And that, so that makes they could me do feel whatever. a little bit better. It's a little bit better, but it's still well, not very if good. if you are in a culture where horse eating is a thing that happens. Well, yeah. But it's still, rolling it down the stairs is a little bit cruel yeah. in and of itself, so... Yeah, I mean, not to not to not to compare horses and humanity on an equal level, but it's like getting someone off of death row and experimenting on them because they're going to die anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got that kind of. Well, it doesn't matter. It's still morally yeah. wrong. Um, yeah. And you know, I mean, yeah. but the so point ho- is, is that the the horse, that poor horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say. 
There's a metaphor of horses that I really don't understand. In this well, now we do. Apparently, they represent life. And they represent stabbing life. Stabbing life after you push it down the stairs. Yeah, you sit, you gotta. Sometimes you just gotta grab life by throw it uh, down the stairs and then stab throw it with a spear. Down the stairs, stab it with a spear, and then uh, give it back to the butcher shop. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, oh, yeah, that's life in a nutshell, Adam. That's that's life in a nutshell. Throwing horses downstairs. <laughs> there's a stabbing them and then giving them back to butcher shops. Yeah, yeah. No, I um, no. There's a. It, this is one of those movies, and this happens to me sometimes. This happened to me when I was taking those kind of god awful like cinema classes and stuff. Yeah, is sometimes people will tell me there's a bunch of themes in a movie and it's really deep. And I then watch the film, and I go, "Really? I don't <laughs> know about that. I don't know. Like, I certainly believe that the director had the intention of putting a lot of themes." Yes. But does not change the fact that I did not really connect to those themes. Yeah. And possibly well, it's just a personal failing. Perhaps I'm a moron. <laughs> I don't think you're a complete perhaps, moron, Pat. Perhaps I'm not as deep as other people. Yeah. Perhaps um, I'm shallow and like my entertainment to be entertaining. Well, one, one interesting thing. On the, on the DVD of this, there were some interviews with Tarkovsky. Um <laughs> Oh, I'm already yeah. excited. Yes. Um, it, it was interesting because they're all, they were introduced by a, a very heavily accented man speaking English, and then all of the, uh, all of the Tchaikovsky things were, were in Russian or French, at least, <laughs> at one point, actually. Um, but, but they got progressively, like, weirder. They were all very clearly different interviews, and he talks about the movie, he talks about art, he talks about a couple different things, but it, it starts with him, like, just in a room, like, it's a sound stage or whatever, then, like, him in a hotel room, whatever, you know, it's just him talking to the camera, and then there's another one, I can't remember where it is, but then the third one, he's in a tree in the woods, and he's, he's just laying back in a tree, kind of playing with the bark as he talks, and then the final one is just him in voiceover as we see scenes of traffic. And I don't remember the traffic uh, correlating to uh, to what he was saying at all. Um, but but by, the time, by the time I had gotten to that point, I had been watching uh, five hours of this stuff. Yeah, and, um, that, yeah, and that's another yeah. point about this movie. Yes, it is yeah. technically three hours and 35 minutes. It will take you at least five hours to watch this film. Yes, yes. Because it's a very you long movie. cannot... Unless you are yeah. bedridden like you were, sit yeah. through this film for three and a half hours straight. Yeah. It, I think it is actually physically impossible. Yeah, it's, it's, just, not it's the same like, thing like on an airline, how they tell you you have to stand up and walk yeah. around once in a while, or else you get yeah. blood clots. Yeah. Other other movies, uh, you know, other movies we've watched that have this long have at have least we had like intermissions. Well, okay, uh, Seven Samurai was over three hours. Oh, just that's over three hours. that's true, and it but, but it, it also has an intermission with lovely. But music. it also yeah had an intermission um, to to cue you that you've been sitting watching this too long. Yeah, it's and, an you know, hour and a half. Get up, walk, go yeah. to the bathroom. Yeah, um, but yeah. Anyway, what I was what I was getting into is that one of the things that that Tarkovsky says this movie is about. And that's very that's very literary <laughs> criticism of me to say that that the author of this movie thinks his movie is about this. Um, but, but one of the things one of the things he says it's about is uh, is the uh, that you can't. His, it's in a section of on his advice to young people. He gets into this <laughs> is is that you can't pass experience on. That you have to experience a thing yourself. You can't just tell a person what what the experience is and have them learn the lesson. But, you know, we get that mm-hmm. we get into that in the end um, with with the bell maker very literally. Um, but right. we also get into that with the conversations that um, Rublev has with the Greek. You know, are very okay. The Greek, and that's a yeah. problem right there. Okay, because. Okay. The way I understand that those conversations are important, yeah, but they are also extremely dry. Uh, but also, they, we get in this kind of weird like show don't tell thing. Mm-hmm. He says it's a theme of the movie, but he doesn't show that theme. He talk. He has the characters talk about that theme. Yeah, that's nonsense. Yeah, yeah I guess you and I could make a three-hour do- movie about people talking <laughs> about modern philosophy. 
Yes. But that's not the theme of the movie. Yeah. The mo- the yeah. theme of the movie is people talking. Well, yeah. And that's that's where it's stronger in that final scene and in right. that final uh, that final section is Which that, is why we're, I like that we're, section. <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing this boy who claims that experience has been passed on to him but it hasn't. And he, he gains that experience on his own, and it makes him a better person for it, even though for a while it makes him a much worse person as he's, as he's floundering around and having people beaten for not listening to him, even though he has no idea what he's talking about. Um, it sounds but it's Russian. It's Russian. Right, um, yeah, man, it is yeah. so Russian. But in the earlier movies, or in the earlier sequences, you know, we start off with that with that big long conversation between him and the Greek, and I I liked that conversation. That was, I thought that conversation was acceptable. the first one, the first yes. one with Rublev and the Greek, where they're talking yes. about uh, yeah, all kinds of <laughs> all kinds of things. Yes, a lot of things. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> but but they get into you know the nature of of, of humanity and and. A lot of interesting things, and later when he's after the after the taking of uh, whatever city they were in, oh, had the name on it, Vladimir or something. It is, yeah, it's called Vladimir. That, that's what a true. name for a city. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, things that you know, Rublev. Rublev apparently has learned the lesson the Greek learned, but but the things Rublev was saying at first were very, uh, while they were ideological, they were very nice, nice things. And I think I think he was onto something with them too, that they weren't necessarily untrue. You know, uh, he finishes he finishes the scene saying maybe they crucified him out of love because they were helping his divine plan. P- and speaking of Christ and the people, uh, the people put him to death. Um, you know, I think that's, I think that's a very, that's a good way of viewing things, as far as that goes. Well, especially if that, you're a painter who's supposed to yeah, paint these yeah. scenes, you need that yeah. sort of. Yeah. And and we do get into that a couple times in the film where he yeah. needs to feel that what he's painting is is about love, not about yeah fear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, and we get into that with the Judgment Day thing, and yeah, and yeah, and, and he says. And, that to me is a theme in the movie, yeah. But that's not the theme that the director talks about. Yeah, that's not well. Exper- that's not experience. Don't you know? Yeah. Can't be passed on. That's a man. Another one theme. man's journey trying to find a way to yeah. kind of make yeah. what he does acceptable. Yeah. Well, another yeah. another very clear theme in the movie is you know the the interplay of art and religion and and where to draw a line if you want to draw a line because if you're making religious art you're also preaching in a way and you need to you need to make sure what you're preaching is is what you want to say and that's that's where it gets in the, you know well, the and, that, and that's being, one of being his forced, major yeah. problems yeah. is he's yeah. not preaching what he wants to preach he's preaching what somebody yeah. else wants him to preach but then yeah. he's a painter for hire and so we get kind of yes and the into same, a problem yes. is like somebody is paying him to make what they want. Yeah. And I mean, so we get into another problem of like, well, yeah. you have an obligation to fulfill the things you have said you're going to do. Yeah. What you're being paid to do. And that's yeah. all fine and dandy. But the, the issue is also that like, that's all sort of couched in like, we're going to talk about these problems. Yeah. And that is, there's just so much like, it just, it's not exposition. I don't know what they call it. It's just here. We're gonna talk about the topics. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's like watching. I don't know. It's like I don't. Even, I can't even think of anything to compare it to. It's watching people talk. Yeah. yeah. Which is by its nature not interesting. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They have interesting philosophical conversations. Yes, of course. I think, and then they have level. ones that people still have. Yeah. But. Yeah. I also don't like to watch normal yeah. people in real life have these conversations. They're yeah. not in, unless unless I'm involved and someone is Right. You know, Which I don't want to probably have no audience right now. Yeah. Because yeah, people hate to, to hear, listen to this sort of thing. Yeah, nobody wants to hear <laughs> people just talk about it. No. But uh, yeah, yeah. And it's, Hello, it's one audience member. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yeah, Mom. thank you for your support. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Rublev eventually says, "I've spent half my life in blindness. I've worked day and night, but you know, he's he's working, 
he's working for evil men, basically. And, you know, he says, he says that the Greek was right to say they were evil. And he says this to a ghost of the Greeks. So. <laughs> yeah. Which um, is just where it gets all Harvey-ish. And then the other thing, yeah. though, is like at that same time is when he says things like that, you kind of get into this. Yeah, obviously the Soviet... I don't know anything about Andre Andre, What's his name? Andrei Tarkovsky? The... Tarkovsky, yes. But he seems like he's a Soviet. Like he's, a, <laughs> he's a believer. Because... Maybe. In in that because he does get into those points about like, you know, because they they mention in the Wikipedia about the rise of Tsardom and stuff like that. You get into this sort of like, the things that religions do are bad, and that's very that would seem to match the sentiment of the place and the time that these films were made. No problem. But I guess because of the fact that he is redeemed at the end, eh, I don't know. It's confusing. <laughs> it's hard to figure out if he was censored for ideological reasons or not. I don't. I yeah. I don't because there are themes in this was. that would match and themes in this that wouldn't match. So yeah, who knows? Yeah, the Sorry, that was a rabbit hole. That didn't go people. anywhere. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for. I'm talking. still uh, no. Ever since I watched it, I'm still trying to work through some of that stuff. I can't. Yeah, because you you just watched it what like six hours ago. Yeah, so. not even. I, <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to get a handle on like some of that stuff. It's more the tertiary yeah. stuff. It's not really the movie. Yeah. But it's more interesting to be the, the movie. <laughs> so basically, well, no, what but... I'm saying is I find state censorship more interesting than this film. <laughs> well, good to hear. Good to hear. Um, yeah. Uh, this did win a Critics Prize at, uh, at Con. Can. Can. Cons. Cans. Keens. Cones. Cons. Cones. Conan. The Barbarian. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian gave this an award. And, <laughs> he said, uh, I give spearing horses two thumbs up. He did. He did. He really loved to spear his horses. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just going to laugh at myself for a minute. Um, You're really going to have yeah. to carry this conversation here, Adam, because frankly... Well, there's, I, not a, there's not a lot to talk about. You know, it's, it's a very beautifully shot movie. Uh, again, well, just we like, get into the conversation we had about like all the other we've ones. had a few. It's like, yeah, yeah um, if you have a big open vistas of very pretty places yeah. that are basically untouched by mankind, yeah, Hi, just turn Russia. on the camera. Yeah, um, the scene with the, the pagans could have is... made this, made those shots. <laughs> they could have strapped a, just strapped the camera to the horse's butt. <laughs> yeah, so like, and, okay, uh, run. We'll just use whatever and, you shoot. And when you're uh, when you stop to eat, we'll get some nice panoramic views. <laughs> yeah, and right. Other than that, um, when you when around. you when you fall asleep, we'll get some Dutch angles. It'll be great. Yeah, it'll be wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of you know the scene with the pagans is supposed to say something about. I think it says know, that I guess. really wanted some naked women in his. He film. wanted you know there were all kinds of naked people all around. Everyone was naked in that movie or in that section. <laughs> Um, Adam, did you watch a different movie than I did? <laughs> everybody was naked in this film, and no, everybody was well, I watched, in awful clothing. I watched the remake where everyone but the pagans were naked. It was, <laughs> it was been very really interesting. interesting. Um, I really, other than that, it was a shot for shot, um, and I really feel like the director did a did an interesting thing. I'm not sure what he was trying to say either, but uh, I, I assume it had something to do with the pun name, though. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Okay, let's I, I can't, stop talking gosh, about my think fake. Of a, of, a, of a bad, like, kind of <laughs> pornish pun name for Andre, oh, Andre, and, Rublev. Andre Rublev, and I cannot do it. I'm so glad you can't. Um, uh, we could we could call it Andre Rub Me Off. Yeah, would, I was going to with work for it, but I, I think yours is better. Yeah, um, it's 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 very, See, it's more of a James Bond joke, I think. Yeah, so. right? Well, kind of both of us. Yeah, no. <laughs> we need to stop. Yeah. Um, About the film. Anyways, so there were, you know, there were individual lessons to learn, I guess. You know, he resists temptation there, and um, then they look away as the woman tries to escape. There's a lot of, there's a lot of the church ignoring the horrors right outside their door for a while in this, in See, this. See, there you go. Then we get into, yeah, never mind. We get into, yeah. It, 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 we, yeah. This is why I have trouble processing this film. Yeah. Is, like, um, it's hard to see who... 
Yeah, because we have lots of uh, examples of the church sort of ignoring the horrors of going on around them. But then, like, yeah. at the end, Andre Rublev is redeemed, but that would mean that he's once again going to participate in this nightmare world. Yeah. It's confusing, Adam. But he's going to try and make it not a nightmare world. No, nah, I don't believe that. Too. He's a painter for hire. Yeah. What's he going to do? He's going to create an entirely new painting style. Um, well, not entirely new. He's going to create a, a subsection new painting style. Of a, um, of a previously existing painting style? <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, he's going to... not really... Yeah. Well, that's the other thing, is I'm not a huge fan of this ty- style of art anyway, so I found the entire, like, ugh, okay. There's a certain beauty in them. Yeah. Um, I did... Actually, on that note... Um, I like it when this movie, like you know, alien. This movie is, is three and a half hours of black and white footage until the very end, and we get a whole bunch of scenes... A, a bunch of, of pans across Rublev's art in full and stunning color. No, um, I don't know about the word stunning. It's in color. <laughs> Comparatively? Uh-huh. Yeah, but here's what I'm saying. I'm going to say that in high and low, the color yeah. was way more brilliant. Just that yes. one red cloud. Yes. Did way more than that final ten minutes of watching paintings. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, no wonder they cut it down. Like, yes, I understand you want to show his art, but you could have, I, in my mind, done a better job if you had actually shown it during the film. <laughs> yeah, we barely get. Oh, we never, we, we never, never see his art. We never see him painting. Film. No, we never see him be an artist. Yeah, uh, which is weird. Um, um, but yeah, like they show it at the end, and I was just like, okay, can I turn this movie off now? <laughs> because like it's and then like, it, it's like. I don't know, like. Why then you can't because we get ten minutes. Of it. It's not even. We get ten minutes painting yeah. until the end. We get ten minutes of close-ups of the paintings, yeah. and then and then the horses again. Yeah, which like <laughs> now. If, oh man, which we've already established. I don't understand the horse motif at all. Well, but could you imagine <laughs> if the throughout the entire movie only the horses had been in color? That would have been awesome. <laughs> man, oh, just saying. We have the technology. We can make that. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we could also make the version you talked about earlier, which would be really weird. Um, Actually, that reminds me of a, an old internet video gag I saw. This was this was years ago of somebody who it was just after the uh, the Star Wars special editions came out. Somebody made a video promoting a Harvey special edition, where where they they went back with CGI to really create the vision of the original director and put a six foot tall rabbit. Into all the scenes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It was ridiculous and wonderful. <laughs> but, uh, oh, uh, genius. It was. That, no, that is this movie, brilliant. This movie, however. Right. Yeah, I can't say that I do not like it. Because yeah. that, I feel like at that point I'm saying I do not like something I do not understand. Yeah. I don't know why people like it, but I feel <laughs> like maybe I just don't understand. I feel like I maybe kinda... I'm the weird one. As a... explain this movie, you to know, you. I called I called it a passion story, and on that level, you know, as a piece of of fiction about, um, you know, wasting talent and and finally redeeming yourself. Um, it works, but it doesn't need to be as long as it is. No, you know? yeah, we could have cut out half the vignettes and yeah. been fine. As a movie, as a movie discussing the philosophical relationship between the evils of humanity and the hope you want to show in your art, um, and the disillusionment you get eventually after trying that for so long and still seeing that humanity is evil, um... <laughs> It, it works, but those conversations don't need to be as long as they are. They don't need to be... And they could um, have shown that conflict. Yeah, and they could have... We could have, we could have shown it. that conflict. And that's my issue, is that there's so much yeah. of this mil- film we could have seen. Yeah. And, you know, they try to show that. And they try to show that with the, with the church ignoring the suffering. And yeah. then finally he, 
he comes to the girl's rescue because you know they're gonna they're gonna do whatever to or punish her because she was praying without a headdress or, or a head covering. Um, then he he comes in, and you know I get the impression I don't necessarily you know, all of the scripture is quoted in Andre's voice. And it's done in this voiceover. Is he like hallucinating it being broadcast, or is he just thinking about it? Because the opening of that scene, he's quoting, you know, Corinthians, uh, was it thirteen? You know, love. Uh, no, it's not. That's love is patient. Love is kind. He's and he's quoting Paul when he says, you know, if if I have all these things but have not love, have not charity, what good is it? You know, if I can if I can speak in tongues of angels but don't have love, what's it mean? You know. And there's a, you know, at the same time, that's the same sort of, Paul was having the same sort of philosophical argument as, you know, the Greek and Rublev are having there. You know, what's the point? Right. If, and, but, and then, but that gives another thing is like, nobody wants to watch people talk that conversation. Through. Yeah. And no one wants to, everybody has that conversation. And it's nice to know that other people are having that conversation. It's nice to see the other, the other conclusions people have had with that conversation but we don't need to see it talked out quite so much. Right, yeah. We don't need to watch Socrates have yeah. the entire conversation. Yeah. Especially, you know, but I feel like in this movie, in this movie, we could have removed the conversations that they're having, and it would have worked thematically to have those things. Yeah. Because we'd okay. still have, yeah. we'd still have the violence and the, and, you know, the right behind the curtain. And we could have just cut those conversations down to, like, a minute basically yeah. kind of getting through the doubts the the feeling of like well what does this all mean yeah. and and that's that's yeah. i mean that's kind of the issue for me is that like i understand that that theme is there and i understand that yeah. the, the movie even kind of shows that theme but yeah i understand that theme is there i don't need to be told that theme is right there. and I don't, when i'm told that that theme is there it stops being a good narrative well and also it starts becoming harder to even for me to see the theme because I've yeah. got these long breaks of talking where like it's like <laughs> yes. could we please just just take a moment and show me that oh you know we've shown me that the church is bad and that he's not painting yeah. things that he believes in and the, it's not fulfilling his you know yeah, and his his, his turning point stuff. his turning point for that comes you know when he's you know, when the church, everyone's huddling in the church to to be saved from the invaders, from the barbarians, you know, and that that becomes that's the first point where the church is, um, where the church is protecting the people instead of just ignoring the people's plight, and you know, at the very end with the with the bald guy from the beginning who is singing, um, where he wants to kill Rublev because he thinks that he sold him out to the people who arrested him at the beginning of the movie. And Kirill comes in and says, says it wasn't him, it was me, and I'm so sorry that I've done it. You know, that's that's the church taking responsibility for ignoring the plight of the people and, and coming in and you know, apologizing and, and making amends, and or trying to make amends. So... Yeah, we've got that. Yeah, as but a then theme in, too. but but then we get into the thing is that that that's more the church's journey than it is Rublev's yeah. journey, and like yeah. who are we redeeming right now? Like yeah. who's the main person? Well, who needs to be redeemed here? It's confusing. Yeah. Well, you know, as 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 a monk, as a representative of of the faith, I guess Rublev has a a mirrored journey in what he does. Mm, I can see that. Um, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, I don't know if, the, and you know, maybe I'm just talking out my butt no, there. Maybe I the movie's not even trying to say something it's about just, that. It's but. really, I find that like, despite, I, like I said, or maybe I said on the podcast, it's like, I read the Wikipedia basically simultaneously just so I could understand what was going on <laughs> because I found this very hard to follow. And I think the main flaw of this film is that it is, in fact, three and a half hours long. Yes. The main problem is, is that it is so hard to to concentrate for three and a half yeah. hours that it was really hard to follow the threads of ideas. Perhaps those are there. 
and I really believe there's quite a bit of the, quite the possibility that those themes are there and obvious. Yeah. If you can maintain your attention for three and a half hours on those themes, <laughs> yes. Despite everything, yeah. all the other irrelevant things that are also happening. Yeah, maybe those yeah. themes are there and quite obvious. Maybe if you watch this film like four times, <laughs> like I get the impression that other the... people who have reviewed this film have, then maybe it becomes clear. I it, yeah. and that's I think a, a thing. I I think the main flaw is not that the film is bad, is that it's three and a half hours yeah. long and I can't do it. Yeah, it's three and a half hours of nothing <laughs> for me. So yeah, so I think I think. It's the final, the final vein of, of what I was just saying is is a direct quote from the ghost of the Greek. You know, live between divine forgiveness and your own torment. Uh, as for your sins, the scripture says to seek justice and rebuke the oppressor. God forgives. You don't have to. Basically, mm. is is what it gets at. You know, um, so live live the best you can because because that's life. <laughs> And, Which is simultaneously you know, as... profound and not profound at all. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. You know, when when you boil it down, every anything sounds less profound when you when you try to put it to its base itself. It's bad. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a long and nearly incomprehensible movie. Yeah, but at least it's not incomprehensible because it's just full of non sequitur. Have we watched other it's, films that were nonsensical because they didn't make any sense? I feel like um, we I, probably, or, but I can't yeah. remember any. The point is, is right th- now. this one was a hard one. This is if you're listening yeah. to this and you haven't watched it, and I assume this just made no sense. Um, but don't. <laughs> I wouldn't say watch it. I don't. Know. Yeah. From my personal standpoint, this is not one that's going into my pantheon of thank goodness I watched it. And you know, this movie, this movie routinely makes lists of you know. High, high ranking list of world cinema and, and blah blah blah. It, you know, I can I can understand as a piece of art, yeah yeah as, as something. But there. then then you get into this sort of like self like generating yeah. cycle. If everybody already says that it's the greatest thing ever and you have to watch it, then everybody else will say yeah. it's the greatest thing ever that you have to watch it. And it's like yeah. yeah so, but you know every again we get everybody's entitled to their own opinion. So yeah. I was I was very surprised at how graphically violent this movie was. Yeah, yeah, that was quite surprising. Even even just beyond the the on screen death of a horse and the the burning cow, which apparently they did. It was a stunt cow. Um, the cow had a fireproof blanket on. Oh, was on I fire. was trying to figure out what yeah. you meant by stunt cow. So it made entirely <laughs> yes. spam. So yes. I was trying no. to figure out. Like, no, that's obviously not true because you see the cow walking around. <laughs> you never but, know. Well, running around. <laughs> this is Soviet Russia, well, the, Adam. The Russian they 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 were really big on robotics and and technology. Robotics so. spam cow monsters. <laughs> no, no. But but the violence, the the human on human violence, very you know very explicit. Um, no, fairly explicit. Yeah, it is, but it's but, not like I mean we do see yeah. it worse. I mean, for goodness' oh, yeah. sake! We, like I said, I, I yeah, we have, and so yeah, it it is a little surprising, but not the worst we've seen. So yeah, yeah. Oh God, nothing will beat the worst that we've ever seen. Yeah. I've forgotten. <laughs> Never forget. That. Never <laughs> I don't forget. think I ever will be able to. Um, I may I haven't mentioned this before, but I've started my my sort of gung ho go-to phrase for, for well, let's get this done, uh, is it won't be as bad as Sallow. Nothing will ever be as bad as Sallow. I've watched Sallow. I can do anything. Yeah, right? It makes you invincible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, long movie. I, Hard to, you know, to understand. It's a long movie. Um, it, mm-hmm. it raises some interesting philosophical questions and then stares at its navel for a very long time. <laughs> yes, um, exactly. Yeah, so... <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> so I'm sure it's great for stoners or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's not good for stoners. I don't they know. just have nightmares. I don't know any stoners, so. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank yeah, you. Thank you for, for listening, listening to us and be confused by this film. 
I'm sorry that if you have any theories on on the movie, feel free to email them to Pat. And yeah, and we'll talk um, about it in fifty <laughs> episodes. Then we'll talk about it in fifty episodes. No, no, it's a, that's that's one thing. When you, when this gets read, read? Heard, when this gets heard, if people want to talk about it, we can talk about it live. You know, in, in comments that. Will yeah, and then there's there's somewhere there's also the always the possibility of adding addendums and stuff. It's always yeah we so. are not that uh, anyway. inflexible. So next time around, we're going to be watching Henri Gorget's Henri Gorget Clouseau. It's French. I highly doubt I pronounced that correctly. Uh, movie is diabolical. Well, you certainly didn't it because is... you didn't say ah, which I know is a requirement for French. Yeah, I've read that. Um, mm. <laughs> So Trust it's me, it's. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Pat. This is a sort of. This is a an early horror film. No, really I like I like er, early horror much better than I like yeah. modern horror. Yeah. I find it well, more artistic. Um, also, my goodness, Hulu has been trying to make me watch this movie for like since we started. It Diabolic. Yes, it comes up on like you should watch this every time I turn it on. Yes. So yes. finally, that is true. I can I can take, we'll get to tell watch Hulu it. to go shove it and just watch it. <laughs> there we go. So that'll be that'll be up next. Uh, Nineteen fifty five Diabolique, and we look forward to having you listen to us talk some more. Yes, thank, thank you, you for listening for sticking with us. Oh, so I'm far. so sorry. Listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via Lost in Criterion at with two brains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.